I don't think any of us really like it when something, something bad happens to us. I mean, obviously. Um, nobody likes it when we go through some hard times or pain or, or sorrow or struggling with something in, in life. Um, but what about when we know that, that, that something's coming? Uh, maybe in a way, uh, we still maybe, I don't know, maybe that leaves us uh, anxious. Um, if we're told ahead of time, you know, that something's coming, uh, maybe it's, you know, something that's not going to be pleasant, maybe a procedure or surgery or uh, maybe something work-related or something in life that's going to be hard. And we don't look forward to it, but sometimes knowing ahead of time, it does help us hopefully get ready mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, whatever the case may be. Well, put yourself in the shoes of our brothers and sisters so long ago in the church in Smyrna that we're going to read about today in Revelation chapter 2. You have to excuse my, my voice today. Um, I've been dealing with some uh, something going on, but I'm trying to do my best here. Uh, so just bear with me. But Revelation chapter 2. Last week, we looked at the church in Ephesus and talked about their situation and what the Lord Jesus said to them. But today, we want to look at the next group of Christians that the, our Lord and Savior spoke to these words for, uh, they were written for and sent to, and that is the church in Smyrna. Um, you know, as we look at these different letters to the churches, you know, some of them uh, are going to have some good things said about them, some bad things said about them. A couple of them have only good things. I'm sure they were not always perfect people, but the Lord didn't have anything to correct them about that he mentions. And this is one of those that really, but, but their situation was going to be tough because he tells them that some unpleasant, hard, difficult, painful sorrowful things are coming and you got to get ready and you've got to overcome it let's look at it together revelation chapter 2 beginning in verse 8 to the angel of the church of in smyrna write these things says the first and the last who was dead and came to life jesus our lord and savior Jesus is the first and the last. Jesus is the one who came, who died, who has been raised back to life and is alive today. And he is sending these words to them, and here's his message. I know your works, he says. And he tells all of them. I mean, God knows all. God, Jesus, the Father, the Spirit, they, they know our works. They see all that we're doing in our personal lives. And as the Lord's body of people, as a church. And so he says to them also, I know your works. And here's what he says. Not only their works, but he says, I know your tribulation and your poverty. Although, here in parentheses is said, but you are in fact rich. You might be in poverty, you know, physically. They're going through these tribulations. There, there's some hard things that are going to happen and... But they're rich in spirit, they're rich in God, they're rich in Christ, they're rich in spiritual blessings. He says, and I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews but are not, excuse me, but are instead a synagogue of Satan, a congregation of Satan. Ouch. You know, apparently there was something going on with these who were you know, obviously claiming to be, you know, Jews and standing for probably the law and whatever and this and that. And, and Jesus says, no, but we know, I know, that they are of Satan. And apparently these were the ones who were giving them trouble, going to give them trouble, it seems. Because then in verse 10, he says... Do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Hmm. How many of us want to hear those words? That you're about to suffer some things. 
It's not going to be pleasant, not going to be good. But do not fear. Do not fear any of the things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested. And you will have tribulation for ten days. You're going to have tribulation. You're about to be persecuted. You're about to go through some things that are going to cause you suffering. The devil's behind it. And he says, though, this is a test. You are going to be tested. What is going to be tested? Well, your faith is going to be tested. Your perseverance is going to be tested. Your trust in God, your righteousness, your hope, everything in you about God and Christ, you are about to be tested. But here's what he says. Be faithful until death. Be faithful until death or unto death. And I will give you the crown of life. You know, sometimes we, we hear this expression used and, um, and it's fitting, you know, though for those who, you know, spend a lifetime, you know, serving God and, you know, they, they leave this earth, they die at a, a good old age. But that's not what Jesus is talking about here. What Jesus is telling them is to be faithful to the point of death. Be faithful even if it means you get killed. Be faithful to the point you are willing to die. And if that is the case, and if you are faithful, no matter what, he says, I will give you the crown of life. You may die in this world, in this fleshly body, but God gives us that crown of life, eternal life in heaven with him. So he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes will not be hurt by the second death. So he says to them, listen up. He who has ears to hear, that means pay attention. Take this seriously. Because the one who overcomes, the one who is faithful no matter what, will not be hurt by the second death. And what is the second death? Well, the book of Revelation talks about that as well later on. The second death is being lost in hell for eternity. But if we're faithful to God, no matter what, and we pass that test of faith, then the second death, the hellfire, will not harm us because we're going to be with God in heaven. And so that's why he writes to these brethren in Smyrna that, folks, there's some things coming and it's not going to be pleasant. It's going to be hard. It's going to be tough. I mean, when you start throwing, a word, throwing around the word suffering, and that ain't too pleasant. And it's going to be a test. A test is coming. Get ready to pass the test, he says. Well, today... The Bible tells us the New Testament talks a lot about being persecuted for righteousness, being persecuted as Christians. The world's going to hate us. The world's going to mock us. The world's going to make fun of us, all these different things. Are we ready to be tested? Are we ready every day for our faith to be tested? And, and maybe right now we're not going through it. Maybe right now we're not enduring some great test of faith, but... Are we ready for when it does come? Are we ready now? Are we preparing ourselves now? Are we getting our faith and our strength ready now so that whenever these kinds of tests and suffering and persecutions and whatever comes along, we will be ready to stand the test, pass the test with God's help, God's strength, God's grace. God will help us. And the same message is to us today. Be faithful to the point of death and you'll receive the crown of life. Overcome and we will not be hurt by the second death. That's what God has made possible for us in Jesus. So let's stand strong. Let's work on our faith now. Let's be ready for our trials and tests to come. 
so that we can be with the Lord in heaven. Encourage one another, help one another. I hope this is encouraging and helpful so that we all can stand strong against Satan, against temptations, against trials, and be together in heaven forever in the presence of God. God bless.